Hello everyone, today we're going to be reacting to a video put out by NBC Bay Area. This is a video that is going to be covering the maybe best practices in their opinion about what to do about the current situation when it comes to violent crime, specifically how Asians have been an increasing target lately of violent crime. We're going to watch the video, kind of react to some of the advice that it gives, and then maybe uh, continue that discussion a little bit after. If you're looking for a way to support the channel, if you use the link down in the description to my merch website where we have all this cool stuff, if you use that link and then buy anything else in the store, it helps support this channel and I would very much appreciate that. Without further ado though, let's get into the video. So here's the title of the video, How to Be a Better Bystander. Remember these five steps if you witness an attack. We're going to actually watch this through and then we'll kind of react to it. This video out of New York is shining a light on another issue involving hate crimes against the AAPI community. Police say they've arrested the man seen here kicking and stomping on a 65-year-old Filipino woman. Three witnesses look on from the lobby of a nearby building. For Jennifer Lee of Oakland, the salt on the wound is when one of the men closes the front door to the building. Just so i think something that this shows us all here is that you are the only person that can protect you or the people you care about uh the police can't always be there security guards are often told not to intervene even if someone wants to help maybe they don't have the physical capabilities to help you if your attacker is someone that is very large like it appeared to be in that video maybe the people around you don't have the necessary strength or skill it would take or the tools it would take to effectively stop them from potentially murdering you and is that something that you want to be caught without i don't know so when it comes to your own self-defense your own protection is your own responsibility and i've seen a lot of people lately especially within the asian communities encouraging people to learn basic self-defense tactics and maybe potentially carry a tool that would help you actually increase the amount of force that you could output close the door so casually was like what the Lee is part of two volunteer foot patrol groups. Here she is hitting the pavement in Oakland's Chinatown with the grassroots organization Asians with Attitudes. It just feels like the American experience for Asian Americans is that when we're suffering, people see it and they just close the door on us. But how do you... So that's something that is uh, pretty cool. I don't know anything about that group, Asians with Attitude. I think I've seen some of the people I follow on Instagram share stuff that they post. So if it's something that you're interested in, you can definitely go check them out. If you have your opinions about that group or organization as a whole, go ahead and drop that down below too. Let's talk about it. If it's something that you guys recommend uh, engaging with, interacting with, and following, maybe that's something that we can talk about again in the future. But we see that instance where the security guard, who's literally right there watching a 64-year-old woman get stomped, closes the door after like that's pretty shocking right you can't rely on other people people might come to your aid but you are your only true hope when it comes to being a good first responder step in without putting yourself in danger that's the question we asked jorge arteaga with hollaback a nonprofit that is teaming up with the group asian americans advancing justice to host virtual training sessions on how to be a better bystander he says too often people's first instinct is to whip out their phones and press record make sure someone is helping this person um, before you just stand there to record here are hollaback my problem with that is that it implies that you should be looking to make sure that someone else is going to go help because i think generally our society as a whole has kind of pushed off the idea of being the one to provide aid to yourself or others to the fire department the police uh you know the fire department and paramedics you know they can get there pretty quick but they're only going to be able to respond after the fact Police, again, you know, sometimes police are there to stop something in the act, and that's great. Sometimes they do stop stuff while it's in progress, but you're the only person that's there necessarily at the very beginning when something is happening and you can choose what it is that you are going to be able to be prepared for. Whether you choose to carry pepper spray, taser, mace, a gun, whatever it is, whether you just choose to have fighting skills, be situationally aware, what you choose to prepare for is what you're able to take on into your own responsibility and not have to rely on someone else or rely on having a bystander maybe not just pick out their phone and record a video of you getting drug off by a vehicle and die ask five d's on how to intervene distract the suspect by distract delegate document delay direct these motherfuckers really just hit us with the five d's of dodgeball i'm just gonna we're just going to kind of cut it right there because 
some of this might be good advice. Some of this might be good stuff to do. Not every so, not every problem in the world needs to be handled with a Glock 19, but I can assure you that some problems can be handled with a Glock 19. Maybe you choose to carry pepper spray or a taser. I don't know. Whatever it is that you choose, understand your equipment, know how to use it, and be prepared to actually do something. Have the tools, have the necessary skill set and training to protect yourself. You can't rely on someone to distract, delegate, document, delay, and direct. What you need to rely on is yourself and have that true sense of self-reliance. I think it's great that these groups are organizing and trying to bring awareness to this, but ultimately I think people are going to be focusing uh, a lot on the wrong problems. They're going to say that uh, it's white supremacy that is causing all this violence. No, it's more so socioeconomic issues in society, the drug problems, crime as a whole, mental health, all these other big issues that kind of dictate how people interact with each other in society, that's really what we need to be looking at. And unfortunately, it seems like right now they're just saying it is only white supremacy or only specifically white people being racist that is the problem. Really, we know it's a whole lot more than that. We have a drug problem that is continuing to put people in jail. It's uh, affecting poor people disproportionately. We have all these big socioeconomic issues in the world that we need to be focusing on, but it seems like they're just going to, again, just kind of push it off, and we probably won't see much of this anti-Asian hate in a few months. I have a feeling, like with most things, the media will eventually lose interest in this, but that doesn't mean that crimes against Asians won't still be happening at a disproportionate rate. So does that mean that you need to stop being prepared? No. Does that mean that you need to live in a sense of paranoia? Absolutely the hell not. Keep in mind, just because someone chooses to have tools to protect themselves, even if it's something as simple as pepper spray, this palm pepper spray is like 10 bucks, slips right into my, right into my pocket, super easy, you can hardly even see that. Having the tools to protect yourself does not make you paranoid. In fact, when I carry stuff with me, I do it while also recognizing the fact that violent crime has been on a steady decline for the past 60 years. I was born in 1994. That means that as a whole, I have basically never lived in a safer time to be alive when it comes to general trends as a whole, which don't necessarily dictate certain areas. But again, violent crime, national decline. Simple as that. You are safe, generally you can find yourself in unsafe situations. That's why you get to choose what sort of level of impact you put on your day-to-day -day life and what sort of preparedness do you wish to live at that allows you to be prepared for the unlikely events. That's ultimately up to you. Personally, I carry a gun on me because it is a very small amount of weight and discomfort and inconvenience to have it around with me. Carrying about two pounds of extra weight on my body on any given day doesn't really impact how I interact and uh, do my day-to-day -day business. Most of my friends that know me really well know that I have this YouTube channel, know that I carry a gun. We'll be out, we'll be having fun, going out in the city for the whole day. We'll get back to the house and I'll take my gun off and they'll be like, you were carrying this whole day? Or sometimes I won't even, I won't even take it off and it'll just randomly come up and someone will be like, were you carrying today? And I'll just, I'll just lift up my shirt. It's 8 p.m. by this time. I've been hanging out with them for like six hours and they don't even know. So the mild inconvenience of having something even just as simple as a little thing of pepper spray, super small. Does that mean that you're living in fear? No. Does that mean that you should live in fear? No. I think that your mental health is also important and that you should balance your preparedness to what sort of impact that puts on your daily life. Because if being super prepared for everything all the time means that you have a resting heart rate of 120 and you die at age 40 because of a heart attack from stress, not exactly a good, good thing. You can kind of find a balance of what it takes for you to feel prepared, feel comfortable without living in fear and living in a state of paranoia. And ultimately, I think that's how you should kind of try to live your life. I understand that everybody's situation is different and not everything is going to be possible for every person. So if anything that I'm saying seems like it's coming from a point of privilege, okay, yeah, sure. I live a good life. My life is good. And that's great. I'm happy for me. Hopefully you're happy for me as well. If you don't live in a situation like that, I understand that everybody's life is different. And I'm sorry about that. You guys know the drill though. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.